Welcome back to the sixth race weekend in the Goodyear FIA European Truck Racing Championship. And we are back on track, as you can tell, this weekend in Zola, Belgium. And it's only been two weekends ever since we experienced a really strong week race weekend in Most Czech Republic. And all those drivers have been really fortunate, really amazing races. But one guy has not been as lucky, speaking of Mark Taylor. He had to experience an accident in race number three and a really strong impact, but see for yourself. Fans might have wondered, will he be back, Mark Taylor, in this really broken truck? And here's the answer, it's one truck family and he is back on track and this is his truck and I know the boys are hiding right in front of it because this really has been a very strong moment ever since most all these boys and all these teams have been working together to get their truck ready but Mark just speak for himself. Oh definitely yeah um, when we were at Moss it was a big crash and the truck was a mess and we we got it back well the drivers and everyone got it back to Sasha's and all the teams got stuck into it 12 hour days big days and they all did it all, managed to get me back. Yeah, I think it was more our guys, you know, especially my father works quite close. And I think uh, the thing is what we've created out of this, you know, me and Sasha ran last year together, um, ran quite nicely, both teams together. And it's quite nice that now he's come from the two family to four of us. And uh, I think every single team, all, all of us, whether it's John, whether it's Sasha, all the guys help, you know, we have a real good laugh and we have to really put it down to Sasha. You know, Sasha's brought us together, not only gave us the ability to drive with two trucks that have come from him, uh, you know, working alongside him and Stefan, you know, has, has taught us a lot and it can show. And I think the whole thing is that we're all together combined as a family. So bear with us, this is going to be another amazing race weekend, so many races to come. It's going to be exciting in the Promoters Cup, they're still fighting for first place. And of course in the main championship, it's not said yet that Norbert Kisch might be the champion. So really like just sit in front of your TV screen or your computer screen and just watch this really amazing championship. And he's one guy who is super fast, very experienced driver. Chas already mentioned his wins, 284 or something like that. That's a lot. So I just spoke to Sasha and he's like in competition with you about third and second place in this championship this year. What's your plan for Solder? Okay, my plan is to be as fast as I can, you know. Uh, yeah, it will, be, it will be good if we finish uh, this weekend ahead of Sasha, but uh, I think uh, we are uh, both very fast, you know, so it's going to be tough. But um, yeah, I mean, I feel good, so I try to do my best. And of course, I will try to make more points than Sacha. Do you have any plans about maybe like fighting against Mr. Albacete? Because the two of you always have a very special fight about maybe second and third place this season. You know, Antonio and Jochen are old rabbits in, the, in this championship. Um, it's really nice that I can fight with the guys, so, but I hope uh, I win the fight. The first race of the weekend in meeting six of the 2023 Goodyear FIA European Truck Racing Championship was looking like a usual affair from the front row, with Norbert Kish and Jochen Hahn starting alongside one another. The two of them led into turns one and two, with Sasha Lenz and Jose Eduardo Rodriguez behind, the Portuguese driver having a fantastic qualifying session, getting right amongst the Titan drivers and leaving his chrome compatriots in the dust. 
There was quite a lot of dust literally at Zolder as well as the sand traps got kicked up all over the circuit. It looked very dramatic, but it was all just part of the show as the series headed down towards the Kleiner chicane for the first time of the weekend. It was good to have Jonathan Andre back at the back of the pack for this first race, but after being taken out of qualifying with his lap times deleted, he would have to start from the back for the first race or two. But still, he was constantly improving, while Norbert Kish was constantly improving his lead. Unfortunately though, a couple of laps in, Norby started to slow very strangely. It seemed like there was a problem with the truck, and he was able to get it back to the pit lane. We saw him drive down the start finish straight once more though, and that's where everybody bore witness to a spectacular turbocharger failure which would take Norby and Reverse Racing out of race one. Not something that we see very often at all. Norby used his head though and with some quick thinking got the truck pulled over at the side of the road at the earliest opportunity and they could hide it behind the barriers and move it back into the pit lane out of harm's way. Very selfless thinking because it meant that the race didn't need to get stopped or have any sort of full course yellow. It all looked very dramatic though in the paddock with the smoke trail that followed Norby all the way back to their awning, but Reverse Racing had a big repair job ahead of them to replace that turbocharger before race two. This was Reverse Racing, however, and they certainly got the job done quickly and efficiently. Damn! Yeah, well, obviously very disappointing, you know, because, you know, again, safely in the lead, um, building the gap, and then looks like the turbo charger went, so, you know, obviously disappointed losing the win like this. But, uh, yeah, you know, it happens in track racing, you know, so... That meant that Jochen Hahn was able to continue leading the race with Sasha Lenz in second position and Jose Eduardo Rodriguez in third. The Portuguese driver had been winning the entire Promoters' Cup all season and was now on course to take a overall podium position for the first time in either a race one or a race three for this season. Jochen Hahn was looking nice and in control at the front of the field, despite the odd bit of dust kicked up. He was being kept honest by Sasha Lenz, who now knew that he could get a race victory out of this, so he was pushing on into the final stages of the race with no Norby in sight. In the background, it was Steffi Halm and Antonio Albacetti doing battle for what would become fourth and fifth positions by the end, but Jochen had everything under control, and as they came out of the final corners, Sasha Lenz was clearly very happy with second place, but Jochen Hahn took his third race victory of the season and Jose Eduardo Rodriguez completed the podium in his first podium appearance in race one of a weekend in his career. Steffi Halm would hold on to fourth position ahead of Antonio Albacetti, while in the background Andre Kurzim completed another fantastic defensive drive to stay ahead of Stefan Fass, who was then second in the Promoters' Cup category for this race. It was another great display of driving though by Andre Kersim to keep a driver behind despite intense pressure and everybody at the team was very happy with the result as Heinrich Clemens Hecker would complete the Promoters Cup podium. But Jochen Hahn takes his third win of the season. Jochen, it looks like Solder loves you. Of course everyone first of all has to congratulate him. But it really looks like Belgium loves you and Solda loves you, no? You said be smart, so you have to be lucky and smart, huh? Yeah, but Diana said to me before the start, um, when you make a mistake, you are the winner. Maybe, maybe. So now I'm very happy. It's Okay, he go very fast and he have a technical mistake. I say thank you to him. Normally it's not possible to go in this position, but... Ah, I'm trust, not I'm trust, I'm proud to be, to be in the middle and I stay here, I'm very happy. So Jochen Hahn kicks off his Zolder weekend with a race victory and in the perfect fashion finishes ahead of Sasha Lenz who's one of his rivals in the championship and everybody celebrates Jose Eduardo Rodriguez's first appearance on the overall podium in race one. Jochen Hahn wins, Lenz second ahead of Rodriguez and then Steffi Halm finishes in fourth place with Antonio Albacetti behind. Then we have Andre Kurzim, Stefan Fass, Heinrich Clemens Hecker, John Newell and Louis Requenco finishing the point scorers in race one of the weekend. I'm actually waiting for Sasha Lenz because it's, it's his 250th race. 
this one here. So I really want to hear of him if he even counted his races ever. And uh, he has been on podium second place beforehand. So maybe this is a big reason to be back on podium later on. Now they're finally arriving. Well, so I don't know. Um, I see a picture in Facebook after the, the race one. And they're saying gratulations for 250 races. And I say to my guys, hey, listen, we have a 250 races now. And what mechanic guys say, yeah, I know. I was uh, 245 here. <laughs> All right, I really love this. And you became second in the first race. So does this make you push even more for more trophies to come now? No, I want to look that anything. It's fine that we, have, we, we become points. So when on the end, P5, P6 or P3, doesn't matter for us. So um, I need points. That's only what, what we need. Race two of the weekend gave us the exciting prospect of both of the Scaniers in the field on the front row, Heinrich Clemens Hecker and Stefan Fass, both of them hoping for big points in the Promoters' Cup from this round. Antonio Albacetti and Andre Kurzim started on the second row just behind them, hoping to pick out whatever opportunities they could, but on this very narrow and twisty Zolder circuit, it was always going to be difficult to overtake, and especially to try and keep clean air in front of you. In the first couple of corners, Stefan Fass eventually found himself in fifth position, and Heinrich Clemens Hecker had a big moment into the Kleiner chicane. This was an ideal opportunity for Antonio Albacetti, who cut across the front of Andre Kurzim and took the lead for T-Sport Bernau, leaving everybody else in the field wondering where on earth they could go. The narrow confines of Zolder proving to be a huge challenge once again. Antonio started to stretch his legs at the front of the field, while Jochen Hahn made his way through the order as well, keeping it nice and clean here with Jose Eduardo Rodriguez and Norbert Kish wanting to carve his way through the order again. Norby had started down in 13th position, but some of the positions came back to him as freebies, two here in the form of Sasha Lenz and Heinrich Clemens Hecker, who came together down at the Lucien Bianchi box and ended their races in the gravel. It was very disappointing for the Scania driver, especially as he'd started from the front row. Later on, we got a replay of the incident, and you can see that even Heinrich Clemens Hecker was coming into the corner completely backwards after a tiny tap, and the two of them just tripped over one another and ended in the gravel. Norbert Kish continued a ridiculously impressive charge through the order, moving past Andre Kurzim here into second place and going to chase down his teammate Antonio Albacetti. Andre Kurzim was yet again defending for his life and holding on to the position ahead of Jose Eduardo Rodriguez, Jochen Hahn and Jamie Anderson. It was fantastic pack racing though, as all of them tried to get the slightest of advantages over one another. Andre was placing the Iveco beautifully though and managed to keep his nerve along the entire race. Antonio Albacetti was watching his mirrors as Norbert Kish closed in, but everybody had their eyes in all different directions here because there was so much to look at and so many battles unravelling as the race went on. Norby was eventually right on the tail of his teammate Antonio, but the race would eventually be red flagged due to Stefan Fass being the second Scania off into the gravel down at turn three. A simple lock-up on the way into the corner and the truck not responding meant that he would take a trip into the gravel. Norbert Kish got ahead, but just as the red flag came out, it would go back to Antonio Albacetti on countback, just five thousandths of a second between the pair as they crossed the line. Well, good to see you in the finish line and good to see you in first place again. Who knew 25 minutes ago when you were like, I take this really calm and slow and there we are again, first place. So. Yeah, you know, not happy because of the red flag. It's not a first place, you know, it's Antonio. It's because they go one lap back. And I think it's uh, more than disappointing, you know, after a race like this, you know, when I can, I can come up so clean, you know, and, uh, you know, the first over or the first touch I had was with Antonio when he was uh, defending a little bit too aggressive, you know, I think. But, you know, overall, again, good performance, uh, very good job from the team, you know, coming back, fixing the track and then uh, coming and, uh, yeah, you know, I, I take this as a win, you know. 
and Norby could literally take it as a win as well. Antonio Albacete was declared winner at the time, but due to two five-second penalties later on in the evening, he would be demoted down into second place, so Norbert Kish would inherit the race victory. Andre Kurzim would be still in third position, ahead of Jochen Hahn and Jose Eduardo Rodriguez. Jamie Anderson, John Newell and Mark Taylor would complete a British trio in the middle of the top 10, ahead of Louis Requenco and Steffi Halm, who finished the points finishers in what was a very attritional and very dramatic race. Jonathan Andre and Stefan Fass were the last two classified. And as day turned to dusk, there was a fantastic celebration of the One Truck Family ethos with over 200 painted trucks covered in their flashing beacons with music pounding in a great, great atmosphere, as there always is at our wonderful truck race meetings. Welcome to the second race day of the Goodyear FIA European Truck Racing Championship here in Belgium and Zolda is the race track. The third race of this weekend will be starting out soon. And there's Chanul, and he had some issues on the truck in qualifying number two. But you're back in your truck, so you're ready to race and to maybe like make some dust over there and just push in the front. Yeah, definitely. We've got the truck repaired pretty quick, so everything feels okay now. So we just need to go forward as quick as possible. I just happened to speak to a medical president and he told me it's not only about drinking but also eating electrolytes. How did you prepare for this race? Yeah, I have a couple of little uh, drinks with electrolytes in before we start, but other than that we're not too bad. It's not that hot. So the third race of the weekend would get underway with Norbert Kish and Sasha Lenz on the front row. Time deletions in qualifying meant that Jochen Hahn and Antonio Albacete were to start from the second row of the grid. Steffi Halm and Jose Eduardo Rodriguez lined up on the third row and everybody kept it nice and clean and tidy through the first couple of corners. But soon the battles would start to rage on. Andre Kurzim side by side with Stefan Fass while Jose Eduardo Rodriguez looked down the inside of Jamie Anderson. But it was Norbert Kish yet again running away with things at the front. Yet again, Andre Kursim was engaged in another defensive race. He had to keep a truck behind him that was constantly knocking on the door. And that truck was the number 24 machine of Stefan Fass. Stefan was under pressure knowing that he needed to move forward to recuperate some of the points against Jose Eduardo Rodriguez in the Promoters Cup. But Andre Kursim was making it difficult for him. It was great to watch though as the Iveco and the Scania cascaded their way around the gorgeous Zolder scenery. Unfortunately the race was red flagged very suddenly after Louis Requenco had this very dramatic failure and ended up in the gravel. Luckily the fire putting itself out really quickly and Louis was absolutely fine. It would however mean that the truck was done for the weekend, the repairs not being able to be carried out at the circuit and they would need to be completed at the workshop. There was a lot of attention around the truck after the race to try and figure out what had gone wrong. It seemed like on the surface though the damage wasn't too bad, there were just specific components that would need to be replaced and fixed that the team, like mentioned, couldn't fix at the circuit. That would mean though that with the red flag coming out, Norbert Kish was the race winner ahead of a very delighted Sasha Lenz and Jochen Hahn completing the podium. It was clear when returning to the paddock that Sasha Lenz was a happy boy taking big points from the first race of the day and the team had really deserved it. Of course, it's like a DHV from yesterday. Congratulations for a very strong race today. It was your 251st race and all finally back on podium. How are you feeling? Also, you finished under red flag again. <laughs> yeah, we are really, really, really happy. Uh, my mechanic guys make a really good job. Um, we have a lot of problems, you know, sometimes I, I feel the truck not so nice. Uh, the guys check every time the truck and uh, we work really hard that we become P2 back. So, uh, yeah, I think it was a good race. Nobody can drive directly a big gap. So, and then was uh, only managed a little bit. 
And I see the last two laps, uh, Jochen comes every time closer and closer. And then I say, OK, Jochen, it's in only three laps. I think when I make a no mistake, you can be not overtake. So I am happy. A clearly very happy Sasha Lenz finishing in second place and clawing back more important championship points. But nobody seemingly could claw enough championship points back on that man, Norbert Kish, who takes his second race victory on the bounce this weekend at Zolder and certainly moves himself closer and closer to taking his third title in a row, his fifth title overall. Sasha Lenz in second and Jochen Hahn in third is a very familiar podium, but Antonio Albacetti in fourth and Jamie Anderson in fifth still trying their very hardest to stick with the front runners. Jose Eduardo Rodriguez was top of the Promoters' Cup once again, keeping his championship hopes flying. Truck racers and racing fans from all over the world. Yeah, we are back in the field for race number four of the sixth race weekend of the season, and we're about to get started. But beforehand, of course, we will have some interviews. And we're still in the race. You had a lot of fun this weekend, I would say. You had a lot of fighting going on. So, what will we see in race number four of you, or performance right now? Oh, well, I mean, race number four, I mean, it's always, uh, let's say, a lottery, you know. Uh, we will have to try to survive, but it's going to be difficult, you know, because the guys in front are quick also. They are very quick, so it's not going to be easy to, to pass. So I think it's going to be a, I think it's going to be a good race. I mean, a race for watch. race to watch indeed as noted by Antonio Albacetti with the dueling pair of Stefan Fass and Andre Kurzim on the front row yet again ready to do battle. Jamie Anderson and Jose Eduardo Rodriguez were trying their very hardest in the opening stages after starting on the second row but as usual Norbert Kish was the one that was carving through and making moves. He was all over the back of Jamie Anderson while trying to keep Antonio Albacetti and Jochen Hahn behind. It was excellent to see the trucks winding their way through the scenery once again, showing just how accurate and precise our drivers can be. This circuit a definite unique challenge compared to the rest of the calendar, with walls never too far away. Stefan Fass was doing a great job at the front of the field, leading Andre Kurzim and the third place to Jose Eduardo Rodriguez. The Portuguese driver was having a brilliant, brilliant weekend, but that did not stop him from being overtaken by Norbert Kish down into the Villeneuve chicane. That's not saying, though, that Norby had to take a few attempts to get it done. Jose Eduardo was working very, very hard to hold his podium position. Norby knew that it was going to be not long before he got by, but he had to really work hard to get it, as he could see Jochen Hahn in his rearview mirror chasing him down now that he'd broken away from the pack a bit further behind. Soon enough, Norby was in second position after overtaking Andre Kurzim, and there was only Stefan Fass in front of him that could stop him now. That was until Stefan Fass had an airline failure, which meant that the brakes would automatically come on and the truck was grinding to a halt around the circuit. It was absolutely devastating stuff for the Tank Pool 24 squad, but Stefan could do nothing as the truck constantly wanted to stop. That left Norbert Kish in the race lead once again on his way to his third race win of the weekend, but the battles behind were getting hotter and hotter all the time, with Andre Kurzim yet again playing the defensive role. His fellow Iveco driver Jochen Hahn was carving his way through the pack now, and he could eye up another second place to round out his weekend with some big championship points. Norby was flawless as ever at the front of the field though, and in a truck that unfortunately let him down at the start of the weekend, he coasted away at the front of the field with all the battles going on in his rearview mirror. Jochen Hahn here going down the inside of Andre Kurzim to eventually take that second place. Andre fought hard though against his fellow Iveco driver, kicking the back end out round the first corner, but ultimately would not be able to defend the position from the six-time champion. Norbert Kirsch wins his third race on the bounce and his 17th win of the season, edging ever closer to that record of most wins in one season, which he secured in 2015 with 19 race wins. Epic stuff yet again from the Hungarian on a weekend where I think everybody knows he could have taken all four wins.
As we were wishing for, to have one race with 12 laps and you're ending up at number one and congratulations, we managed. Really, really amazing. Thank you. Yes, uh, well, again, uh, very good race for us and uh, yeah, we were very strong already first lap and then in the in the later laps as well. I mean, I can see the others struggling on the brakes and solder is really hard on the brakes. So I, yeah, this is a unique circuit where you have to prepare your brake cooling, you know, different than everywhere else. And I think we are very well in that and uh, I can brake so late, you know, and I can see others struggling on these uh, hard braking zones for the chicanes and everything. And then I could make these nice overtakes, you know, it's um, I am so happy, you know, because we are performing very well. Uh, the machine is, you know, dialed in for all of the, all type of circuits in the calendar, you know, so far. Norbert Kish rounding out a fantastic weekend, taking his third race victory ahead of championship rival Jochen Hahn, who was always up to his usual mischief with Jose Eduardo Rodriguez yet again joining them on the podium. Four wins out of four in the Promoters' Cup at Zolder for Jose Eduardo, but Norbert Kish now holds a very sturdy lead in the championship with the possibility of taking the title at Le Mans. Jochen Hahn still in second with Sasha Lenz still in third, Antonio Albacetti in fourth ahead of the battling Andre Kurzim and Steffi Halm. Jamie Anderson looking good in seventh place as well as he continues to climb up the order in the championship. Jose Eduardo Rodriguez's lead in the Promoters' Cup looks more comfortable now as well over Stefan Fass, with John Newell and Mark Taylor battling it out for third position. Louis Requenco and Heinrich Clemens Hecker are also close on points with only a couple of race meetings left. But with us being done here at Zolder, it's now time to move on to Le Mans in a few weeks' time. We'll see you there. <laughs>